Agent Carter Season 2 Episode 6 Thoughts. This episode is called Life of the Party. Another episode I love. Another of my absolute favorite episodes. I'm so glad Dottie is back. Really, really missed her. I'm I'm glad that the clearly the, the writers realize what you know what a boon she is for the show. And uh yes, so spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything in this video that's MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. Let's dive right in. So let's see the yeah, so, are you okay? And, let's see, yeah, they talk about the the pain that Peggy feels because of the, the rebar wound. Someone else. And I, there's, there's some amazing acting choices in this episode. I'm going to try to call out each of them. Uh, I don't think I ended up writing it down. So one of them comes later when... I'm going to try to do them largely chronologically. But one that I didn't write down was later in the episode when... Um, let's see. Jarvis is trying to distract Jack Thompson. And, you know, Jack is, like, headed in one direction. And, and Jarvis, like, puts a hand, like, right in front of, like, his chest to, like, stop him... And there's like a, a second or a couple of seconds where like the the look in the eye, the eyes of Jack Thompson is like, you know that I could split you in half with my pinky nail, right? Like this is not gonna end well for you, dude. Are you are you serious, right? Like he almost there's there's like this palpable like he can't believe it. Like, if his face would not show more shock if gravity had just ceased to exist or something. Like, just... But, but yeah. Chronologically, when Dottie, you know, like, she's already... It's, it's glorious from, from moment one. Her, uh, you know, she's, she's lying there on the bed and just this, this, you know, smirk on her face. And then, you know, oh, so there's a Dr. Wexford here for, for you. Send him in. And, you know, there are, which, yeah, that old, you know, joke about, you know, I can't operate on, the, you know, this man. He's my son. You know, but, yeah, the, the you know, door opens, in walks Peggy in disguise. And just the smile on Dottie's face as she says, hello, Dr. Wexford. Just, you know, because, like... Of course she's going to play along. It would be ridiculous for her to be like, a, a guard? This is an SSR agent in disguise? Please arrest her post haste. You know, no, of course she's going to play along. But the smile, like, she can't, and probably has no interest in, even pretending like she isn't loving this. Like, that wasn't Peggy walking through the door. That was like a birthday cake. That was like, oh, this is glorious. I'm so, you know, and and also the fact that she says, I, I, you know, I've been waiting for this. I knew this was coming. I knew you didn't actually like just cut off contact with me. You know, you need me. You know it, and I'm going to hold this over your head forever. And we have the. <laughs> Yeah, I like that she point. You know, she doesn't say f the four walls of it. She says six walls. It's a cube, Peggy. Try to keep up. <laughs> and the let's see. Yeah, I love her analyzing the the situation. You know, she like really picks apart the the. Let's see. And, and also just, yeah, um, considering this will be a home for the foreseeable future, perhaps you should stop decorating. It takes more than six walls to hold me. And the, the yeah, um, poor Anna, very, very concerned for, for Edwin. You know, she, she drops the, the thing that they were working on. And, yeah, um, Peggy might not like Dottie playing coy, 
but we the audience you know we 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 drink it in this is this this gives me life i i just so so good just yeah and yeah i love the you know both of them you know so we're clear you know and and peggy's peggy's is something like you know i'm going to you know i i i am 100% ready for you and we're going to keep a close eye on you i won't let you hurt anyone something like that and Dottie's like so we're clear and and you know she lists hers and one of them is you will never be ready for me <laughs> just yeah amazing and let's see yeah and you know she's like okay take this and this will let you escape you know and and you know she's she's holding it in in her hands as as Peggy leaves and the guard comes in and and Dottie's like see you at dinner <laughs> and the guard like just he could not look more miserable just in you know yeah um, I also liked, you know, uh, the guard asked Peggy, you know, are you sure you want to be left alone with her? She's, she's difficult, you know, but, but yeah, and, and, you know, he, he, he doesn't even make sure to check because he doesn't want to go anywhere near her. He hates her. So, you know, she doesn't even have to work very hard. Like she's got it clasped in her, her hands, but like, you know, if he was like patting her down or something, which also Peggy knew he wouldn't because nobody wants to be that, you know, if you're not. If you're not working with her, if you're not on her side, you probably don't want to be spending more time with Dottie Underwood than absolutely necessary because she gets under your skin. You know, she's she's such a great villain. I'm I love these compelling female villains. You know, Dottie and Whitney just so so good. I I I am. Um, it's going to be very difficult. My self-imposed, you know, I, I'm not going to watch the next episode until tomorrow. I promise myself that. I cannot wait to see more of Dottie and, and Whitney. And I love, that's the one, I've never, I don't think we've ever seen Dottie scared before. But Whitney standing over her like that, you know, just, yeah. That, that would put, you know, fear into anyone. But, but yeah, the, the you know, yeah, she, she uh, unscrews the thing and takes them apart and then realizes... Magnets. How the f do they work? And you know, you puts them on the wall and uses that to to open the the lock. And you know, Peggy knocked out the the guy with the the knockout lipstick kiss. But she took the gun. Peggy, you're no fun at all. Just, oh God. And yeah, she barely gets outside. And you know, they they shoot the the this little, like web contraption on her. And, you know, she's like, you really thought this would stop me? No, this will. And, you know, activates the thing, zzz, zzz, you know, falls over. And let's see. Yeah, and, and she's got her in this machine. And, I, the, the, you know, ah, oh, what a nice choker. I'll have to get you back one of these days. <laughs> oh, God. And, yeah, the th uh, Mr. Jarvis, why's your wristwatch? It's a wristwatch. It's on my oh, you know, and and Dottie took it, and she's she happily gives it up. She's just you know, she's just playing with them. She's just this is it's like it's like a a cat like poking at at like a a, a mouse that it's what's no yeah yeah like holding holding the mouse and on like poking you know just wait do cats do that in real life or is that just cartoons anyway you know it's it's it has that energy like. She's not actually, you know, it, it wasn't even like part of her plan or something. She's just doing it just to just to mess with them, just to keep them, you know, off balance. And so it's kind of ridiculous. And again, I feel like they're pushing Edwin Jarvis a little too far for for comedic relief. But I, it, it certainly was impressive when you know the the. Oh, you know the the hairdresser thing gets turned on, so there's no audio, and we're just seeing him mime the the. You know, we're not we can't hear what is being said, and he's miming out taking out a sword from a cane, and you know like uh, cyanide pill or so, something like that. You know, which I mean, I am on his side. We we need more canes that are secretly swords. 
and let's see, then we have the um, um, right, and yeah, uh, Calvin helps Whitney cover the the zero matter, and we get some great lines about you know you, you we can't reschedule these you know these people do not reschedule the council do not give second chances, and let's see, yeah, and <laughs> so so Peggy asks you know do do you know this is your target do you know her? Uh, she's an actress she starred in F for Freedom. Not my kind of pictures. <laughs> really love these little quips about, you know, because she's a communist. She's a, a Soviet communist. You know, she later on she's like, the decadence of this party is disgusting, you know. Some some really great stuff there and let's see. Yeah. No matter what you do, don't let her touch you. No touching. Just no more Kristen side hug. I get it. And I. Just, oh, look, Blondie. I'll go say hi. <laughs> just love it. Just so good. You know, and, and yeah, is like. I appreciate, like, I, I, I don't know if I was supposed to, but I didn't realize, oh, Jack is going to be there, you know, even though, you know, it, it's not the first time he's gone to the the, the club, but, yeah, you know, now, because he knows, he knows Dottie, and he knows Jarvis, you know, that, yeah, that can really put a, put a damper on it, you know, and Dottie, like, on the one hand, she knows that they're going to stop her from, from going over there, but also, like, I mean, hypothetically, if she gets close enough to Jack, it's not really gonna matter that he's like got a gun or whatever, you know. That's not not gonna stop her. And you know they're inside a club. It's not a police station, so not everybody there is gonna have a gun anyway. And <laughs> can I kill him? No, don't kill him. You know that was that was also quite fun and. Let's see. Yeah, you know, they, the, they cannot, you know, Jarvis and Dottie cannot be spotted by Jack Thompson. No Tom spotting. And then Dottie has disappeared, which just, oh my god. And again, like, Jarvis gets her back seemingly easily enough, so it's not, she wasn't even, like, making a big thing. She just wanted to have some fun, you know, just toying with her, just, yeah. And... Yeah, and we learned that, you know, one of the members of the council, what was it, he owns every newspaper, what was it, west of the Mississippi, or so, something like that, you know, just, yeah. And, yeah, um, Hugh Jones, you know, confronts Jack, and uh, um, Vernon points out, you know, you gotta admit, this sounds like Peggy. You gotta get this under control. <laughs> I like that this time it's a woman telling, um, telling a man, you should smile more. And, you know, Jack is like, well, you know, okay, this, this young woman is showing interest in me. You know, she, he's like, I hasn't been a lot of reasons to smile today. And then she's like, well, the night is young. And, you know, oh. and then Jarvis gets involved. It just, yeah. And, yeah, some great stuff in, in that interaction. You know, Jarvis is like, oh, you know, this other guy thought you were Bert Lancaster. And, yeah, just really, really fun. And, yeah, and, and, you know, Thompson is like, I know Peggy's behind this. You know, the the... And and yeah, Jarvis is like nonsense. She was reading a rather bawdy piece of pulp fiction, and and yeah, Jack is is not buying it for a second. And let's see, let me have the yeah, and yeah, Dottie bumps into to Whitney and. Oh, I'm sorry, did I stick you? And, you know, she was very quick. In reality, she did, of course, stick her with a little sample thing. But because she's holding up the pin, and she's, again, she, you know, even Whitney can fall for this thing because she 
has some internalized misogyny. She also sees this woman, you know, bumping into her, and she assumes, oh, this is, you know, I don't need to respect this individual, you know. And she says, oh, I, I just can't seem to get this thing to, to stick, you know. And, yeah, and, and she, Dottie hides in the closet and sees everything the council does, so, yeah, that's, that's definitely going to be, you know, she she knows what Whitney can do, which I'm not sure Whitney knows that she knows at the end of this episode. So that could come into play in one of the next episodes. And let's see, then we have the... Yeah, um, Whitney demonstrates the, the zero matter. And then we see that Calvin, you know... As, you know, very strongly implied at the end of the previous episode, yeah, he's not trying to help her with the council. He's using them against her. And, yeah, you know, they, they put, like, these, like, things around her, her neck to, to prevent her, you know, and, and they've, they come at her from two angles. So, you know, hypothetically, she should not be able to go in either direction. They, you know, they can just pull her. So, so yeah. Hypothetically, it should work, but her powers have grown so much that, you know, she can direct it at the floor, and it goes up, and, you know, just, I, I, yeah, we see, like, she, she consumes, what is this, six or seven people in this one scene, and I really appreciate that, again, like, it looks horrifying, like, they're, like, melting, and just, yeah, and, yeah, she, of course, takes out Calvin, and I appreciate that, you know, that's given a bit more weight. A lot of these that she's killed, it's, you know, it's, yeah, she's getting to kill a lot of people. But with Calvin, there's, like, way, more weight to it. It's, you know, and I love the line, I made you, you know. this. She legitimately does feel, and from what we've seen, it seems to be right, accurate, that she is the, she's the source of his success, not the other way around. And she, now she's giving orders to the council like it's just nothing. And I love it. There's like a second, you know, Hugh Jones is like, I have something to say. And the guy sitting next to him is like, oh, God, please don't. I'm not with him. I just I just want to make absolutely clear. Whitney, I think you're great. I watched every one of your movies twice, thrice. You're amazing. This guy, we are not affiliated. You know, just the the look on his face, just and and what Hugh Jones says is just, and and again, like we the audience are also like, I mean, he's not known for being like this this very forgiving and open person. He's he's normally very unpleasant towards the people that he doesn't. You know, he's he's used to having the power in the room, and we're wondering, has he not realized? That the the you know the balance of power has shifted pretty significantly away from him now, but no, he's like, I think this is great. I cannot wait to serve at your feet, madam. This is this is wonderful. Please rename me Spot. And let's see. yeah, we get the yeah. Peggy is headed to to go stop. The, you know, and, and we get the thing about, yeah, Peggy, you're injured. If you get spotted, you can't run. If you get cornered, you can't fight. So I'll improvise. And, yeah, she she can't even quite get to the, you know, it, yeah, it looks like you just popped your stitches trying to open a door. Not fun when your body quits on you, is it? Welcome to my world. Oh, how do you cope with it? I'll tell you when I learn how. But it helps to know that sometimes you have to put your faith in others to get the job done. And, let's see, yeah, we learn, you know, Violet did indeed break off the engagement, and she realizes, you know, things were going well for you until I showed up, and apologizes, even though she wasn't, like, she agreed to go, but it was Jack, it was Jack's idea to get her there, but, you know, yeah, she, I, I really appreciate, like, in real life, I think, I'm not one of those people who think that women should apologize for every single, every single little thing. But if you're crafting a character that the audience 
is meant to really empathize with. It just, it really helps if they do sometimes make mistakes and if they're then able to acknowledge and apologize and try to learn from their mistakes. You know, that's just a more interesting character than someone who's like perfect from the ground up. And that's not, I'm not only applying that, st that, st uh, the word is just not coming to me, that, um, yeah, I'm not only applying that to female characters, also male characters. Let's see. And, yeah, Dottie fighting the the guys that Vernon sent after. That was also, that's another great moment of, of acting, of just the look on her face where, you know, she's not like, oh, crap, I'm caught. She's like, hi. She knows, she knows they're not going to be able to do anything to actually hurt her, and she you know, runs off, really just to to get to a, you know, if she's away from Vernon and he sent several people after her, Vernon is going to assume that those guys are going to stop her, which gives her back the element of surprise. And yeah, Dan, you know, Daniel suggests they retreat. And Jack is asked to take out Peggy. And I do really appreciate he and you know, he says, I'm not gonna kill her. You know, that's you know, Vernon has a lot of sway over him, but he is not going to kill Peggy Carter for him. That's not a thing that's gonna happen. And you know, I appreciate that Vernon, in addition to saying, you know, it would be morally wrong, he also says it would be tactically wrong. You know, we're not going to kill her and make her martyr out of her. Ma. Yeah, we are going to discredit her. And yeah, another great scene which, you know, with Jack and him trying to get information out of, you know, him him and Peggy. And, you know, he again is like, you know, there's, there's a flight back to New York. You're going to be on it. And that's how this is going to be. And the, the little things of like, yeah, you know, he makes it very clear that he's aware that she's doing something and he wants her to stop and you know there's that thing about you know uh, i i you know i bet i won't lose what are you willing to bet everything that's a lot to lose but i won't lose <laughs> just love her her confidence and yeah we close on the reveal you know we learned that um jarvis told us that Dottie disappeared, and now we're seeing, you know, she Whitney ended up capturing her. And I also appreciate she like straight up chained her. Like the, the you know, Whitney might be the first person who completely like she's not taking any chances. She takes the threat of Dottie one hundred percent seriously. Uh, yeah, I I really appreciate. I I'm I've always really loved these kind of stories where someone is forced to work with someone that they know they can't completely trust. The and and yeah, like it. You can call it contrived if you want, but if you claim that you did not want to see more of Dottie Underwood on, you know, out in in on mission, I am not going to believe you. Um, yeah, she's just, she's, she's so much fun, and these little things just, yeah, uh, I'm really, really glad she's back on the show. Uh, there's not that many episodes left. Let's see, this was episode six, there's ten total, so seven, eight, nine, ten, yeah, there's four episodes left. Yeah, really looking forward to, to seeing more. I'm, I'm so glad. I was so relieved at the end of season one when she didn't die and just yeah so glad to to see more and and I do now appreciate they they did kind of have to have her arrested at least earlier in this season than you know so that she could come back here and and already have been like captured um, I still I maintain my, my criticisms of that element that I made in the video I made on that first on the season opener. Uh, let's see, but but yeah, you know, made sense. Uh, obviously, you know, can't can't be Daniel, can't be Peggy. You know, it, they need to get someone that Whitney has never seen close enough to to get the sample. 
Oh, right. Um, also, at the start of the episode, the, the thing of, you know, uh, Dr. I can't believe I'm always thinking of Dr. Wilkes, you know, is, is, he disappears briefly. And, you know, back now, but just, yeah. Let's see. And. So the, yeah, I'm to be trivia for this episode. Ray Wise and Kurt Smith appear together. They also appear appeared as partners in crime in RoboCop. Feels like forever ago, but they're also they're they're so good in that. The, just yeah. Just give me my F and phone call. Um I think that might be about what I have to say for the um, yeah um, right uh, yes so in this episode also um, Sousa and Peggy you know it's it's this thing of you know yeah he he had feelings for her she didn't really seem to return those feelings but now they do you know they have a little moment so you know maybe they will end up together um yeah i'm i'm interested to see where that goes from here and then we have uh, let's see Yeah, um, I, yes, I should be able to do an episode of the show tomorrow, and until then, i leave you with, yeah, Anna asks Peggy, shouldn't you be resting? And Peggy responds, in a perfect world, but sadly there's no rest for the weary and wounded until the job is done. <laughs>